Right, so to continue on from the last video, because it ran out of space, so I have to delete some. This is a Prius power split device, and I'm going to show you it as best as I can how it runs real time. Okay, so this isn't exactly how it would work. Right, the outer gear is the bit that would be connected to the road wheels via gearbox, of course, and MG2. This middle bit here, that normally would be connected to the engine, right, and the sun gear, which is the thing that's in the jaws of the vice, is connected to MG1, the generator part, basically. Okay? And so, this is probably how it would work if it was on, like, in a motorway or something. So you're going along at reasonably high speed, the engine's running, and you've got some takeoff going into either MG... from MG1 to MG2 or into the battery. Right? But if you stop the engine... So what I'm going to do now is show... Uh, I'll have to be careful with this. Okay. So if I actually put the brakes on, onto the bit in the planet system, you'll see that the outer will slow will then slow down. Right? See? There it goes. And it's now rotating the other way. Okay. So what I've done is I've actually put the brakes on, so I'm slowing down the planet system, right? So that the outer gear I might be able to just get it, oops, if I can get it on the cusp, I can get it so that it's stationary. There you go, see? So now the uh, planet system is going at the right speed, right, to just uh, generate. So if this was generating electricity that was going straight into the battery, then this is the arrangement that you would see. So the planet system would then, the planet gears basically would transfer all the power to MG1, okay? Now, if you were starting the car and same time as generating, then what happens is, if I actually release this so that it allows the engine to speed up, you would see that the out system, the, the ring gear, now speeds up as if it, that's accelerating the car, you see? And what happens, what happens is the, uh, the gear, this is connected to the engine, this bit, through the, the centre of the lathe, okay? So that just goes to show you how you can transfer power using an epicyclic gearbox. Again, I'm slowing down the engine, and the engine is now... It's actually nearly stopped. I can stop the engine, although you wouldn't really have this system, right? So what's happening now is that the ring gear is actually going in the opposite direction now to, the, uh, to what would be MG1. Which is may, maybe how it works in reverse, you see? Because the engine stopped. So you just use an MG1 to transfer the power to the rear to the ring. I don't think it works like that, I think it just simply uses MG2 to power it backwards. Right? But as you can see, now if I allow the, end, the the planet system to speed up, okay, because it's just the friction, then you'll see that it's like you're slowing down in reverse. Okay, and then you kind of stop and then you'll start going forward again. Now, I wouldn't normally allow you to do that. Because that would be under control. And so now you're gathering speed and you're up to motorway speeds. You see? So whilst it's not exactly how it would work because I've got a constant RPM on what would be the motor generator, okay, it shows you how altering the speed of this uh, planet system will vary the speed just by basically putting a brake on it effectively. You, you're altering the speed of the, uh, the outer ring gear which is the thing that's connected to road speed. So that would normally be connected to the engine. Sun gear would normally be connected to a motor generator. And the ring gear would be connected to another motor generator, but ultimately the wheels. You see? And I just had it running in the vice because I've actually remeshed it together just to try and make the, the, to, to read through the teeth. So I need to use it now. So that now I can now find out what the gear ratio actually is for all three parts just by just basically turning it and see how many times it turns. Yeah. That's quite interesting, that, when you think about it. What I will do as well, I think, if I stop this again, but what I'll do is I'll just transfer my hand onto the outer gear. Okay, so it's now stopped. See? So I've now stopped the outer gear. I've got to be careful because I don't want to crack the glove. And so you can see now that that is now turning reasonably slowly. Isn't it? I don't know what the speed is. That's not... That is actually turning at that speed. It's only a few RPM. I can tell you that the lathe is actually turning at quite a reasonable RPM. You can see it's blurry, but that isn't. It's not doing anything blurry. That isn't, uh, like, it's not something to do with the shutter speed of the camera. It's actually turning that slowly. So an engine turning that slowly would spin the motor up at that speed. See? If, there are, if it was facing 
there because that's quite interesting. Okay, so we'll just let that speed up. There we go. Normally all three would be powered in different ways and I'm just simply braking them, as in stopping them. Uh, that's pretty good.